Hey guys, so if you're following this series, we have gone from this very crude idea for a logo that we designed in Figma, then we actually created uh, an animated uh, logo. So initially we added all these different um, matcap materials and other things to create this little animation, which is quite funky. And then we did in the last video, um, yeah, did some more animation work. And now what I'm gonna do is show you how to export this in various different ways. So let's get rid of this insanely ugly background that I made. Uh, if you wanna learn how to do that, you can click on the last video and have a little gander. But I've just changed the background color to white. Now we've got this logo and we've got an animation that's like this. Super simple, easy breezy, okay? Now let's say we're like, okay, we want this for Instagram posts. Well, what you can do is you can change the size of the frame here. So how did I do that? I clicked frame, uh, sorry, I clicked scene, and then I went to size, and then you can go 1080 by 1080. Or if you are doing something that's portrait mode, <coughs> you can do that in here. Now let's say you're like, okay, we wanna do a uh, video for social as a kind of teaser campaign, right? What you might do is you might record various different videos that show some different angles of the logo, for example. I actually think this would look way sexier if it was like a dark, maybe like a darker color. Let's have a look like that. Yeah, that's quite nice. Okay, cool. So let's say we're like, yep, yeah, we like that. That is the video that we're gonna use for social. You can click export. You can go down to video recording. And I happen to know that this is a six second video. And uh, the reason for that is because I actually created the uh, states in here. So as you can see, we've got base state, three seconds, state, three seconds. Okay, so that's a six second video. I'm no good at math but I think that is correct. So we're gonna now record this. Uh, I'm gonna click into here, video recording, and I'm gonna change this to fixed, and I'm gonna change this to six seconds. Uh, I'm gonna have this as a uh, MP4 format uh, to upload it to social, and then this is 30 FPS, that's fine, ratio, I want it exactly as the ratio is. Um, megabits, fine. Time, fixed. Duration, six. Okay, I'm gonna click start. And this is gonna give us a preview of what we're gonna record. We can actually click on recording. So this is all a bit meta. It's recording me recording this for you. So it might not work, but um, generally it does work if you're not trying to uh, use Screen Studio at the same time. And then this is gonna to go to your downloads. Now, that is one way of using the asset, okay? You have various different ways of using this asset. You can use it for video, you can use it for imagery, you can use it for an embed, okay? So that was the first one, a video. We've now got this in our um, asset folder. Sick little video. You know, you can use that for social. You could have uh, 20 of these that you could record, drop them one after the other on a 20 day countdown before you release your product or startup. You know, there's so many creative ways that you can use this. And I just think people are sleeping on this tool. It's so powerful. And this is just a logo asset, like imagine product asset or anything. Okay, cool. So let's now change this back to uh, responsive. Um, the other thing that is worth saying as well is that you know you can actually um, change this to to whatever size of format. Um, but something that I think is actually a really cool use case is if you turn your asset and if you then click export and go down to image, then you can export this as a JPEG uh, or you can export this as a PNG and you can actually hide the, the background color as well if you want to. So let's say we want to go JPEG <coughs> and uh, export that. And then I'm also going to get another angle. 
I might want that to be like down a little bit. That's quite cool. Um, export. And now we've got a couple of images that are really cool. Like these could also be used for a social, for a poster. Do you see how quickly like we're using this asset in various different ways that I think aren't really talked about enough? Um, let's change this back to its original position. And the other thing to say as well is that you can actually click on uh, AI style transfer. And if we put this in the middle of the screen, you can actually then change the style super easily by playing around with this. So let's say we want like a steampunk style for our logo. Um, we can click on that and boom, we've got such a mad like style that we've just got created out of nothing. I mean, we've literally just got the logo and now we've got like a cool effect. One of my favorite ones is the fur one fur style check this out this is so sick um okay so fur style we've now got a little furry friend in here if we wanted to say um change this um <coughs> you we can say like make it furrier or something like that we can actually go into here and we can turn down the precision so our asset doesn't need to be, um, it doesn't, it won't be as focused on. Uh, we can change this. We can change the uh, mode to edges. You can see how quickly we can manipulate this and change stuff. Make the fur pink, bright red like the asset. Maybe do that. Just see what comes out of that. Oof. Okay, that didn't work terribly well. But you can see what I mean. You know, you can change um, how your asset looks super fast, and then actually export that as well um, as yeah, as content for social. <coughs> so that's imagery. Okay, and I've actually used that on um, another website, which might be worth showing you guys. Um, this. Uh, iPod Classic website. I'm quite into like the old school iPod Classic. You know, when you didn't get interrupted by notifications the whole time and stuff, and you could just kind of like just be listening to your music without like, hey, uh, th just interrupting this podcast with uh, an advert for something that I am uh, a massive investor in. Um, let's actually go to the published site so you can see this properly i've moved the um the asset so just ignore the fact that the ipod is absolutely gigantic here but you see how i've done these screenshots of these products i just think like this is quite powerful because you know instead of having uh, a full-on product shoot which could cost thousands you can actually just create a 3d asset which looks hyper realistic and then do some beautiful photography like within the actual 3D platform itself. So I just think that's a really cool use case for it. Okay, <coughs> and the final way to actually uh, use this in a project is the embed. So let's change this to responsive. And if we were to actually then uh, embed this, uh, we can go to viewer, we can copy this, and we can actually embed this in a project. This is a bit of a, a longer video, so I'm gonna show that in one whole video in the next video um, when I show you this. Um, but yeah, essentially you can actually use the asset uh, in an embed, which is kind of like the third major use case for it. Other things that are worth just noting though is that if you wanted to uh, embed this in something like an app rather than a website, you can do that quite easily um, using this. You can also just embed it uh, in in an embed, but there is uh, like an app um, version. If you wanted to say create a video game inside Spline <coughs> and then actually host that 
using Spline and then and then create an app for iOS or something, you can do that. You've got um, Vision Pro stuff in here, but you can also do a 3D printing of your asset, which I just think is so cool. Like imagine creating something in 3D and then just printing it. Super sick. Um, also, you can export it for uh, Blender or Sketchfab or whatever else. So plenty of different ways to export your file for different use cases. I hope that was helpful, guys. Like I said, in the next video, we're going to be doing this. Stay tuned.